what's up? More than likely you're watching this video because you have an Everlast machine and you're looking to upgrade your TIG torch uh, and hoses. Uh, I know some of the Everlast come with a 12 foot. This was a 25 foot and I say was because I've had to make a couple of splices and a couple, I've, ha I've had to shorten this uh, because of stepping on the lines and, and you know, there's metal on the floor. It happens. You step on things, you cause leaks. So I tried to make this one last as long as I could, which is about three years. And realistically, I could keep using this until it just gets to be too much of a headache. It's time to upgrade. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to hop online. I'm going to go ahead, order up something, and it'll be good. Well, that's not the case. Everlast, as well as a few other uh, machines, are a little bit different. So um, you have to do your research. So hopefully I'm going to save you a little bit of time because uh, I did the research already. And so I have a 325 EXT with a W300 water cooler. I believe this same setup will also work on the 255 with the water cooler. You might want to check. As long as it has a gas outlet, 35 DINs connector, and a water cooler, this setup should work for you. Um, just take a quick double check and look. Don't take my word for it. So this is the stock line set, stock 35 DINs connector. I do have an upgraded TIG torch. This is a CK uh, 230 flex lock. Um, I'm going to stick with this. This is by far my favorite TIG torch. Um, I've, I've had flex heads. I really like the flex heads. They were awesome. I'm always trying to get into tight spots. I'm always having to deal with that. And uh, after, you know, breaking a couple of the flex heads, because you back and forth, they'll eventually snap on you. Um, they're super robust and they work great and they're reasonably, ex you know, inexpensive. This is about a hundred bucks for just the torch head, uh, just the torch itself. So, um, but it's so versatile, it's, it's worth it. So basically, go ahead and push that off to the side. And this is what I ended up upgrading to. Um, I ended up getting a new uh, protective cover. I believe I got this from WeldCity.com. This is just a 24 by 3 uh, cover. That's the part number. It says cover 24-3. Um, so got that bad boy because this one, as you can see, it's it's tat. It's just it's worn out. I've used it. Um, so I got a new one of those. Definitely want to get one of them. I think that one was about $22. Uh, like I said, I got it on WeldCity.com. I'll go ahead and set that off to the side. Next. Okay. So here is the bad boy. This is an FL2325SF. This is the FlexLock 230A uh, with a 25-foot super flex hose. This is awesome. So, in order to make this work, you need four things. First and foremost, you are going to need the SLWAT-35 DINS connector, half inch DINS 35 connector with the hose right here. That is gonna be uh, your water hose. Now, like I said, you need four things. Here are the other three things you need. You're going to need the QDGAP. This is the gas fitting for the gas hose for this torch. And this is a quick disconnect to fit inside of the uh, inside of the, the cooler as well as the gas inlet on the welder itself. So you'll need one QDGAP. And you're going to need two, two of these. QDWAP. So you got... G for gas, W, A, P for water. The, you'll, you'll notice that there's a couple of, there's hashes all the way around the uh, W, A, P's. Um, that is because these are reverse thread. Uh, you cannot, don't try to take a regular one without here and try to put it on reverse thread. Uh, because if you do somehow get this on, you just ruined a 200 and, or almost $300 set of torch lines. So don't do that. Um, and then, Pull this bad boy out here. You got your super flex hoses. Uh, it, it does come with a long back cap and a small back cap. Uh, I'm gonna go with my Shea Spec stuff. Um, Shea Spec makes amazing stuff. Check them out on Instagram. Uh, super cool dude, small business, makes amazing products. Definitely look him up. Then, 
just just to uh, spice things up a little bit more, um, I got some, I've been running Furic cups for a long time now, and Michael Furick makes some awesome stuff. So whenever Michael Furick stuff up, uh, shows up at the house, it's pretty awesome. I am going to go ahead and move the camera, um, get it a little bit closer, and just kind of show you guys exactly what we're dealing with here. And I'll probably recap just a little bit. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. We got our water hose. We got our main uh, water hose inlet with, that also has your electrode for your um, for your DENS connector here. And then obviously we have our gas hose. Your gas hose is doesn't have any hash marks here, so you want to use that uh, QDGAP. This is from CK Worldwide. I ordered it on WeldFabulous.com. Um, you can search around and maybe save a few bucks here and there. I decided to go with Well Fabulous because they're local here in Minnesota. So um, we're just going to put these guys on here. Like I said, no hash marks, no hash marks. They should just spin on nice and easy. All right, we'll set that off to the side. Then we'll go ahead and we will get our reverse thread. Okay, so here, here's our DENS connector right here. So these guys are going to be... See the two hash marks there? These guys are going to be reverse thread. And like I said, they should just go nice and easy. Just get them snug with your fingers. And then here is our blue line. Water hoses, they're gonna have these hash marks. They're gonna be reverse thread. Do not, do not, if, if these start going on hard, you got the wrong one or you got a burr or something. All right, so uh, got that bad boy all set. Grab a couple wrenches here. You know, if you can avoid uh, using presser wrenches or if you've got a good one, great. Use it. Um, just be really careful. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then I am literally just going to give this a quick snug. All right. So we're good there. We'll do the same thing on the other water line. Remember, reverse thread, hash marks, reverse thread. And here we got reverse thread and I go the wrong way. Okay, got my cursor wrench nice and tight. All right, everything's solid there. All right, regular gas hose, regular thread. So we'll go ahead and tighten this guy up. And I'm not going super crazy He-Man. If you notice, I got my hands choked up on the wrenches pretty good. All right, so we're happy with that. Now, the DINS connector. Uh, the, the last video I saw, a guy had, he struggled pulling this apart. You do not want to just pry this. So you'll see right here, this just spins off. That's kind of like your lock collar, right? So then what you want to do is just press here, put a finger underneath of the threads here and press down. See that? It's that simple. So... I'm just going to put it back, take your finger, press down here where it says press here, and then pull up here, and this will just come right out. If you have to pry on this, you are not doing it right, and you need to be careful. So, we'll go ahead, pull the water line out here, and then you have this sweet little setup here. Um, we'll go ahead, and also, if you notice, you got the hash marks. So we're talking reverse thread. So we'll get that all set up there. Um, oh shoot, it's a little bit bigger than I thought. Okay, I'm gonna grab another crescent wrench. What are you gonna do? You don't have the right wrenches, you got crescent wrenches. Just like I said, just make sure that you're choked up tight, nice and tight on these so you're not, uh, so you don't slip. Especially with this, you need to be careful. You do not want to slip on that. You will ruin a three hundred dollar. You will ruin a three hundred dollar set of hoses, and then you'll be really, 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 really upset with yourself. So I'm just going to give it just a little bit. Kind of hear some tinks there. Now, when you're putting this back in here, there are grooves for this nut. So when you put this back. You just kind of got to finesse it a little bit. Notice I got to putting the hose, hoses back in there. 
And then you just pull this up a little bit forward, just like this. And then you just kind of twist it a little bit. You got a little bit of resistance because of the hoses, but it should slide in nice and easy. Don't got to get all He-Man he -Man on it. Oh, one other thing I forgot to mention. Make sure this guy is nice and tight. Otherwise, you're going to have leaks, and then you're going to have to take it all back apart, and you're going to be upset. Um, so just make sure, because it's covered, you're going to want to make sure it's nice and tight. And then, again, when you're putting this guy in, slide it in here. Just slide it in. There's like two, you can kind of see there's like uh, some guides. And then you just close it. You, you literally shouldn't have to put barely any pressure on this to close it or open it at all. Like I said, just... Just a quick little flick and open it up, no problem. If, you gotta, if you're trying to pry, you were going to break this and you're going to be super mad. Um, because this itself is about $70. All right, now on the 325 VXT, you're going to go electrode negative. So you just go ahead and run this guy in there, your 35 dens. And you have your quick disconnects, and then you have your uh, you have your uh, your input and your output here, and then you have your gas here, and then you're all set and ready to go. Okay, so uh, again, I just kind of wanted to do like a close up of the uh, of the torch and everything. Um, so just got your regular WP20 gas lens, nothing fancy. Um, get them for a couple bucks uh, a piece at your local weld store. Call it in there. Um, I'm using uh, the blue, uh, I believe it's laminated tungsten. And of course, got to throw my uh, got to throw my blingy chase back back cap on there um, like I said before just good super local you know really really cool good silver uh, nice guy um, amazing customer service and clearly amazing uh, quality products here just kind of show you guys a little close up of of his uh, his work here. This is, like I said, this is a number 10 um, Furic uh, ceramic cup. Never used one. Really, really wanted to give it a shot. So we'll uh, we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to go ahead, fire up the welder. Um, we're going to check for uh, check for leaks, everything like that. Check for gas flow. Got good gas flow. About 15 CFA. I'm really super impressed with this uh, this protective sleeve here. The one that I had was denim. Um, this is uh, this is more of a kind of a synthetic, I guess you'd say. But I can definitely feel it's thicker. It seems a little bit more robust than the denim that I had on the CK setup. Um, but uh, overall, I'm I'm happy with it so far. Strike an arc. So just to kind of recap everything that we did, um, we got the Master TIG uh, Flex Lock Series Torch from CK Worldwide, which is the FL2325. SF, uh, that's super flex. Then we went ahead and we got the um, 35 DINs connector, which is the SLWHAT-35 uh, for water-cooled torches. Got to make sure you can get them for gas-cooled, so you got to make sure if you're running a gas-cooled torch, you get the gas-cooled one. This one, the WA. Uh, WHAT35 is the water cool. Um, so make sure that you're paying attention when you buy. Um, and then, like I said, QDGAP uh, gas. You need one of these for the gas connector. 
And then you need two of these guys, QD, WAP, for the water connector. And those are going to be a reverse thread. So um, if you guys have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Uh